to the Passion of Minds course content review. Today we'll be covering organic chemistry basics. So organic chemistry has a great significance in biology. It's the study of compounds that contains carbon-hydrogen bonds and it is an important element that is present in all biological molecules. For example, macromolecules, which we'll be discussing later on in the biochemistry unit. All compounds that contain carbon are known as organic molecules or organic compounds, hence the term organic chemistry. Most of these organic molecules contain hydrogen atoms attached to the carbon element, and these are known as hydrocarbons. Organic chemistry will be touched more in the SH4U grade 12 chemistry course where you have a unit devoted to organic chemistry. So carbon has a big deal because of an ability called tetravalence. So tetravalence is the ability for carbon to form four covalent bonds. This enables carbon to form all kinds of complex molecules. So let's look at the Bohr-Rutherford diagram of carbon. So we have a nucleus in the middle, we have two rings here. Okay, so we have two electrons. One, two, three, four. So this arrangement gives it the ability to form four covalent bonds with other, other atoms. So let's look at uh, the shape, its tetrahedral shape as methane. So CH4. So methane. as a tetrahedral has angles everywhere that are 109.5 degrees and that is a tetrahedron. Um, now carbon also has various types of bonding patterns. So because of its tetravalence, carbon atoms are able to join with one another and form either single double or triple bonds depending on the type of bond form the shape of the molecule will change so this shape is a tetrahedral for both of the carbons in this one each carbon is a trigonal planar shape and this one each carbon is a linear shape because of its tetravalence carbon atoms can bind with one another or to three other common elements such as hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and itself carbon so when we look at the valence electrons we see that hydrogen has space for one more valence electron therefore it's able to form one bond with another oxygen has space for two valence electrons so it's able to form two bonds nitrogen has space for three valence electrons so it's able to form three bonds and carbon has space for four valence electrons, so it's able to form four bonds. So carbon chains can vary in terms of their length, bonds, branching, and ring structures. Uh, the differences will enable each molecule to play a different role in a biological system. So let's talk about the length first. So in, uh, so over here, you see two carbon uh, molecules. So this structure over here is known as ethane versus this one over here with three carbon. This is known as propane. Now with the bonds, with the different bonding position, you'll see that this structure is known as one butene because it forms a double bond on the carbon one over here versus this structure, which is known as 2-butene because of the double bond 
over here in the second carbon. It also differs in terms of branching. So you have butane over here versus 2-methyl but uh, 2-methyl propane over here which has a structure of carbons that looks like this versus just a straight line of four carbons it also differs in terms of the presence of rings so you can have cyclohexane over here or you could have a benzene ring that looks like this so let's go through a bit of nomenclature. So let's talk about alkanes first. So alkanes have a general formula of C and H2N plus 2. Uh, so these are saturated hydrocarbons. Saturated means that all the possible places uh, where you see carbon, they're filled with hydrogen, the maximum amount of hydrogens. Um, so an example could be CH4, which is known as methane. So the way we determine an alkane's nomenclature is we use this prefix chart over here, which I expect you guys to memorize. So if you have one carbon atom that has the prefix meth, if you have two that has F, three, pro, four, but, five, pent, etc. So let's say we have C3H8. Okay, so we have three carbon atoms, therefore we have propane. Now let's talk about alkenes. So alkenes are hydrocarbons that have one double bond, so these are unsaturated. And alkenes, they have the general formula CN. H, two, N. So let's talk about, let's give an example. So let's say we have F, D. What is the formula? So we look at the chart over here. We see that there's two carbon atoms. So it should be C, two, H, four, if you input it into this formula over here. What about C, 9H18. So that should be non ene So let's talk about alkynes. So alkynes are hydrocarbons that contain one triple bond. So these are unsaturated. And for example, let's look at ethyne. Ethyne has a general formula of C2H2. So what does that mean? That means we can deduce that the general formula is C2, C and H2 and minus 2. Now let's look at C4 h6 for example so this is if we look over here we have four and we have but time okay now let's think about how each of these structures would look so methane obviously looks like this um ethene looks like this and ethyne looks like this so this is an alkane this is an alkene and this is an alkyne so functional groups are specific groupings of atoms and molecules that have their own characteristic properties so these are groups of atoms that are frequently attached to carbon skeletons, and they're usually involved in chemical reactions, different types of chemical reactions, depending on their capabilities or their properties. So the first type of functional group we'll talk about are alcohols. So alcohols have a hydroxyl group, 
represented by an OH, so this is a hydroxyl group. You can also see it represented by an ROH, where the R represents the carbon backbone or the chain. So the key feature about alcohols is that they try to help dissolve organic compounds and they are polar. All right, so the next type I'll talk about are aldehydes. So aldehydes, they're represented by a carbonyl group, so a carbonyl, and they look like this. So they have a carbon, they have a double bond to oxygen, that's called a carbonyl, and you have a hydrogen here. Uh, so aldehydes are called aldehydes because the carbonyl group is on the terminal carbon, it's at the end carbon. Whereas ketones, in ketones, you'll have it sandwiched. The carbonyl group is sandwiched between the two chains of carbons, so it'll look something like this. We have R, you have the, the carbonyl, and then you have the another R chain here. So these are ketones. Key thing to remember is this is what you call a carbonyl. Carboxylic acids have a structure that looks like this. So you have a double bonded oxygen, so that's the carbonyl component, and you have a hydroxyl component here, which is attached to the carbon chain or any type of chain. Uh, so it has polar tendencies, and what can happen is the the H could dissociate, the hydrogen could dissociate because of the two electronegative oxygen atoms pulling shared electrons away from the hydrogen. Because oxygen, as we discussed, is very electronegative, so it will try to take the electrons, it will try to pull it towards itself. Amino group looks something like this, so we'll say this is the R group. It has the nitrogen, it has two hydrogens attached there. So uh, this is called the amino group. It can also be simplified as NH2. So in amino acids, so amino acids, they combine both the amino group and a carboxyl group. And it's important in protein uh, in proteins and uh, sometimes the amino group can act as a base because of the unshared pair of electrons on nitrogen. So what you can see here is, there's a lone pair on these nitrogens, so that can act as a base, a Lewis base. So uh, an important example could be methyl amine, which has a structure CH3 and H2. Sulfhydryl is, has a functional group that looks like this, <clears throat> SH. So it belongs to the family of thiols, and it helps to stabilize the structures of proteins. So we'll discuss more about that in uh, the secondary uh, foldings of protein production. Um, and an example could be CH3SH, which is meth then dial. So phosphate groups, they have a structure that looks like this. With the charges present on these oxygens. Um, so these belong to uh, the family of phosphates, and they are a part of ATP, they're part of phospholipids, and nucleotides. So we're going to see later on that they're found in ATP and DNA. Ethers are a type of linkage that are found in carbohydrates. So for example, we'll talk about maltose later, 
Um, so the structure of ethos, e, sorry, ethers, looks something like this, where we have the carbon group, we have an oxygen that connects both of them, and we have another carbon. So maltose, like I said, is technically glucose O glucose with the oxygen linking them. So it's an ether. So these are found in carbohydrates. Esters now, esters are found in fats and they have a structure that looks like this. You have the that carbon chain, carbonyl, and you have another carbon chain here. So esters, a special feature about these is that they're a linkage and they're found specifically in fats. Isomers are compounds that share the same molecular formula, but they have different bonding patterns and atomic organization. So the molecules will have the same types and numbers of elements, but the manner in which they are arranged will differ. So let's take, for example, butane versus isobutane. So they have the same molecular formula, but what differs is the overall arrangement. Now let's talk about geometric isomers. So you can have cis or trans if, it, if the structure you're talking about has, uh, is a ring and you're referring to the substituent groups, or EZ if it's a double bond. So let's talk about the rings first. So if I have, let's say I have dichloro, uh, hexane and it's facing towards me so this is what you call cis one two dichloro cyclo hexane but if this were to go and face away from me, it would be called trans 1,2-dichlorocyclohexane. Let's talk about the double bond now. Let's say we have uh, 2-butene. So in this case, the, the, the largest substituent groups are in the same direction. So this is a Z to butene. But if I were to flip the methyl and the hydrogen, So it'd be like this. I would have E to butene. Finally, let's talk a little bit about enantiomers. So enantiomers differ in the arrangement of atoms around a chiral carbon. So a chiral carbon, so this would be the chiral carbon in this case, a chiral carbon is bonded to four different atoms. Now in this case, because these two atoms over here are mirror images of one another, they cannot be superimposed. So that is the whole uh, idea around enantiomers, that they are uh, non-superimposable mirror images.